Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pommy in Oz YouTube channel. And I'm joined by someone that I came across Twitter last year and I knew this day would happen. I had to have them on. The, the lover of the dogs, the lover of all things iced coffee as well. She's become kind of a Twitter icon. We've got the lovely Barkas Montepelli. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Oh, I, I'm fantastic. I, I'm excited about this because... As someone that does the watch-alongs for Carlton games, I can be accused of being very emotional during them games. And I've noticed your tweets, you really get invested in the game. Oh, if I don't do it, no one else will. So <laughs> I'm quite overcrowded with a lot of Carlton and Collingwood supporters. So got to make myself seen somehow. <laughs> It, it is, and it's one of them games, isn't it? And, like, the doggies have really been all the emotions this year. You started off very poorly, and then you've had two pretty impressive wins, it's got to be said. How have you found this year so far? How has it been for you? Um, the first two weeks came a bit of a shock, considering we had such a really nice preseason, and I was like, oh, yeah, cool, maybe we, you know, we're going to do something. Um, so the first fortnight was a bit of a you know, blow to the gut. But I think after that win against Brisbane, it kind of set the tone a little bit. That was a bit of a character development win. Um, really solid, dominant win. Um, you know, Jamara kicking five. I was like, all right, maybe he's finding his feet. Um, and then last week against Richmond, it was a bit of a slippery game, that one, with, you know, apocalyptic Melbourne weather. Um, but that one, I think, can help us kind of develop a little bit more and hopefully keep on moving upwards from here. It, well, I mean, it was impressive. The Brisbane game was a really good win and then Richmond were uh, full strengths. So a lot of people thought Richmond were going to show their dominance. You did super well, though. You uh, really put them away. What are your thoughts going into Port, who have kind of been almost similar to you guys? They, they started well, have had a bit of a blip, what what are your thoughts going into Brisbane? Because Brisbane are kind of a little bit like the dogs and you don't know which dog side you're going to see. You don't know which port side you're going to see. Yeah, it's kind of like a hit and miss at this moment. Like, because with watching Brisbane last week against Collingwood, I wasn't expecting that, especially like from coming from us the week before. That was a really dominant win against Collingwood and I really enjoyed that one. Um, same deal with Port, um, that win against Sydney, that took me by surprise. Um, Aaliyah's, you know, uh, nice little defending skills, that work came in handy. So I think it'll be a really good game, really interesting game, I think. It, it's an interesting one, like you say, because Hinkley and Beveridge probably are two of the most talked about coaches. I saw after oh. you were 0-2, and two, there was a lot of media talk of has Beveridge run his course. We know every year the media sat Ken Hinkley. This is like a really defining game for both sides because having a three and two record, it kind of makes the two losses totally disappear, doesn't it? I won't lie. I was on the, uh, you know, has Bevo outrun his, you know, time bandwagon with the first two weeks. But I think just finding some momentum can help the boys. But yeah, that three and if we can hopefully go three and two this week, I think it kind of drowns that out but I think regardless we do get talked about quite a lot in the media so and what are your thoughts of obviously everyone's playing in Adelaide this week um I've been talking about it quite a lot on this show saying I think it's unfair that everyone gets an away game and Port and Adelaide don't play each other I thought the fairest way would have been Port and Adelaide play each other and then all 16 of us have a neutral game what are your thoughts going to Adelaide to play Port? We know it's a hard place to go. The Adelaide fans do get behind both of their sides. Yeah, um, it'll definitely we're definitely going to enemy ter territory here. So it'll be interesting. But I think if we can pull something dominant, it will be good because I know that we can pull some good footy, especially like that 21 prelim. That was, you know, absolutely insane. So I know we can play really well. Um, so I think... We just kind of have to bring it and just prove that we're in, we're in, like we're into this. And what are you hoping to see from your boys? What is, do you think the game plan is? Are you, are we going to see a return of the free flowing dogs that we know and love? We know you guys, when you're playing well, you're beautiful to watch. Or do you think you'll see a more controlled style and uh, just try and grind the four points out? 
I kind of want to see our free flowing because I know that sometimes grinding that four points hasn't worked. And we saw that with the Richmond game, like we had a really beautiful first quarter that was solid. And then that second quarter just shut us all up right away with seven unanswered. So I think if we can just kind of free flow it and play that nice footy that I know we can play, I think we definitely can hopefully produce the four points. So I think we're just going to have to wait and see. I, I always look at that prelim final you guys had. That was at the AO 2021 where you guys won by about 70 odd. And that was like the doggies at their best. That was where they're, they're beautiful to watch as a neutral. They're a side that I remember in them final series, always making sure you watch the dogs because it's amazing at full flight. You've got a lot of different team players now, though. Obviously, you know, Dunkley's left and a few of the younger guys are setting up. And there's talk that Cody Waitman's back this week. And he, we're a big fan of Cody on this channel. He's an excitement machine. That forward line, even though it's lost Dunkley, Dunkley at half forward, is really starting to hum, isn't it? It's real exciting to exciting players in there. Yeah, absolutely. Twenty tw The 21 prelim, I probably could say, was the last time I felt alive with this team. Um, but I think having, especially with people like the likes of Oscar Baker coming in, um, you know, that like he is really good with us. Uh, Rory Lobb, I'm still a little bit unsure of because he's a little bit hit and miss, but having um, a really nice tall forward line has worked out well. Um, Norton being a really nice, you know, mentor to Jamara has proved well, especially with um, Brisbane last week. Like that was just absolutely insane, like insane. But I think with Cody coming in, which I'm hoping to see because I absolutely love Cody Waitman, kind of don't want to see Artie lose his place because I'm really liking the footy that Artie is producing. Um, he's small, but the way he just whips in and out, um, grabs the ball, runs with it, um, produces that contest, I think it'll be, it'll be, it'll be a bit of a shame to see him get dropped, but I think it'll be good grounds for him to just kind of grind out and solidify his team um, spot on the team. It's an exciting prospect, and obviously it'd be rude of me not to talk about the man behind you, Marcus Bonapelli, who I think in the last couple of years, people have kind of forgotten about Bon. It, we don't hear about him as much. I remember 2020, 2021, everyone raved about Bonapelli, and then last year and this year, he's kind of just gone under the radar, but I've noticed this year, he looks back to his best. He looks dominant. He's in everything. And kind of a bit like my Patrick Cripps, you can see he's kind of moulding into that captain Bontepelli that trusts his team. How have you seen the evolution of Marcus Bontepelli? Oh, he so he doesn't get talked about enough, I reckon. Um, last week against the Tigers, 27 disposals, 15 of them or so um, contested. And I was just – I'm really impressed because he just – throws his body out onto the line and it's like that kind of thing and just supporting the team when he needs to be. Like he's always there, always like rallying around the boys. And I think, like you said, he's kind of become that Patrick Cripps and moulding into that captain kind of role and just being the best possible person and player he can be um, doesn't get talked about enough because I see all these people making all their lists of who they rate and I was like, you know what, like this is – maybe it's my bulldog bias but – Bonton Pelly is severely underrated because um, he's just flying under the radar, racking up all these crazy stats. And, you know, uh, he doesn't, he definitely doesn't get the hype that he deserves. No, I agree. I, I think he's one of them players that just goes under the radar and maybe a victim of his own high standards when he first came into the league and people have forgot. But Port Adelaide, they've got some talented players. Who are you looking at at Port that you think we need to stop him? He's the guy that I'm worried about if he gets off the chain? I think Aaliyah is, was, has always been one of our biggest um, things because especially that 21 prelim, all everyone could talk about was Aaliyah and, like, because he's crazy. He's insane. He's really good. He's probably at the, like, peak of his career at the moment. Um, so I think he's someone we definitely have to keep an eye on and definitely have to get on top of early in the game because I know that if we – do go to sleep like we normally do in like one quarter of footy. Um, he can definitely take a good run on us, def um, definitely. 
He's, um, as a Carlton fan, Aaliyah Aaliyah has, I think he's probably had one of his best career games against Carlton. He is one of them players that if you don't use the ball well, he is going to eat you up alive. Who are you looking at at your team? Who's the key person for you? Who do you think Port have to fear? Um, Who you think could be the difference maker? That's a tricky one because I think everyone just floats in and out. But I remember in that 21 prelim, it was pretty much not with us anymore, but Josh Shackey did a really good job on him um, where I remember Aaron was going in for the contest and Josh Shackey did a really good job just keeping him down. So I think it'll be, I'm not quite sure. Like I'd like to see Rory Lobb kind of go in there and, you know, do his best, but who knows at this point. And we had some great scenes in the last couple of weeks, Jamara's celebration, which as a neutral, I absolutely loved it. I I thought, what a brave man. And I did want to take a bit of time to talk about Jamara because I thought he handled himself incredibly well that week where he could have gone on socials and condemned everyone and, and, and rightly so, been upset about it. I thought the way that he stayed quiet, he did his talking on the pitch and then the way that he almost brought everyone together in his post game. It's a real credit to, uh, I think, the doggies' leadership, but also Jamara as a mature young man. What were your thoughts on that one? Uh, the Bulldogs' world erupted. Uh, that photo has been floating around in group chats, you know, just talking about how resilient he is. Because coming in as pick number one, people are definitely going to talk about you. You know, you're always going to be the hype and not getting the game, blah, blah. And then for him to just come out and take the stand he did, I think was I'm very impressed with him being so young and, you know, because young people are always very impressionable. Um, so people just barking at you from both sides can definitely take a toll. Um, and we did see that in people like Tom Boyd. Um, so him just being able to take that stand in such a professional way and bring the footy world together the way it like, came together, honestly, couldn't be more proud of him. He's, he's a wonderful young man and we wish him the best. And going into this game, is there any changes you would make? If I gave you Beveridge's job, what would you be doing? Would you be changing anything, keeping a winning team? What what would your changes be? For the most part, I'd keep the, ta- the team the same because I think it's worked well. Um, the dynamic you can see is kind of building slowly but surely. Um, but like we kind of touched on, if Cody Waitman comes in, who who go like who goes out for him? Um, and obviously Alex Keith being under protocols this week means that we'd obviously ha- I'd hope um, if Ryan Garner's ready, I'd love to see him come back into the side. Um, but I think the last time I had a chat with Ryan, he was saying he was still a couple weeks. But you know who knows? So I think for the most part, I'd definitely keep the side the same. And what are your predictions going into this game? If uh, if you were putting money on it, what Ooh. are we going to be seeing at the end of the game? Oh, I'm my Bulldogs vice is going to peak here because I know that we're capable. Um, so I'm going to say Bulldogs. Um, margin, no idea because we've saw, seen the last two weeks that anything could happen. But de- I'm definitely tipping the Bulldogs for this one. Well, you are going to be in luck because so far this year, whoever's gone first in the fan preview has actually won. So, and that includes one shock. So, it could be, I could have helped you out here. I hope you keep it up. But, but thank you. But, you know, we, oh, I hope so. Like, it's, I'd like to see us succeed and do well, but, you know, who knows at this point. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us. You have been a superstar. Her links are in the description. Honestly, go and follow her. She is quality fun and she's a lovely person. It uh, always brings a smile to my Twitter feed. But I wish you the best of luck this weekend and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's been an honour. Cheers. Thank you. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad